This is a high pressure handheld water rocket launcher, which launches high pressure water rockets, which are powered by water and pressurized air. And work like this. In the video where I built the rocket launcher itself, I also spliced some empty soda bottles together to form these rocket sections, which I could launch out of the launcher. But they were unstable, because they didn't have any fins, as I couldn't install any directly onto the rocket sections. The main problem I faced was that the barrel and bottle didn't have enough tolerance to allow any fins to fit. So I decided to improve the system so that the fins deploy after launch, after which the rocket detects apogee and releases a parachute. First, I designed the fin assembly and created the model for it in CAD, after which I ran a CFD flow analysis to make sure that the fins work at least somewhat. Then I 3D printed the parts for the fin assembly out of PETG plastic with 100% infill so it would be strong enough. And to assemble the mechanism, I'll use these machine screws as a hinge around which the fin can rotate, like that. And then I'll install a small extension spring like this into the middle like that, and it makes the fins deploy. To install the fin assembly onto the rocket, I simply unscrew the nozzle and put the fins onto the neck of the bottle, like that, and then screw the nozzle back on, which holds the fin assembly in place. To put the rocket with the fins installed into the barrel, I simply fold the fins down like this, and then just push it in until it clicks in place, like that. And when it exits the barrel, the fins deploy automatically like this. After that, I went out to test the rocket and see how the fins work, and there were a lot of mosquitoes, which beat me through the socks. And for this test, I'll put around seven and a half deciliters of water into the rocket. Like that. Then I put the rocket into the launcher. And I pressurized the rocket to around seven bars, so that it wouldn't fly too far, as this is a small field. And of course it flew right into the forest. One. Oh shit. It went into the trees. Oh shit. Well, looks like I need to go get it. I think I lost it. It's probably up in the trees somewhere. I couldn't find it on the ground anywhere right here, and the forest is really dense. So I think I have to come to the conclusion that it's lost. After losing the last rocket into the forest, I built another bigger one, because size does matter. Then I started working on the parachute release mechanism, which I 3D printed out of the same PETG, but with a thin wall thickness, so the parts are as light lightweight as possible. For the mechanism, I'll use this micro servo motor, which goes into place like that, and is secured from each side with some screws. Like this. And then the servo cable is routed out through this bottom part, and the bottom part is then secured into place with some more screws to the nose cone itself. Like this. And then the hatch goes on there like that, and is locked into place with the servo horn. Then I glued a plastic bottle cap onto the bottom of the nose cone, so it can attach to the top of the rocket, as it has threads. 
the nose cone and parachute mechanism can then be screwed onto the top of the rocket like that. To make the parachute, I used a piece of plastic from a garbage bag, to which I tied some string to the corners of. It's lightweight, strong, and also folds into a small shape easily. I initially considered using an Arduino Mini with an accelerometer to trigger the parachute, but I realized that it would be overkill for this project, and would require a lot of trial and error, and many crashes. So I decided to use this RC receiver, which I would use manually to release the parachute with instead, as it's simpler, more, more reliable and lightweight. And here's the remote control I'll use. To mount the electronics, I use this piece of XPS foam, which I then cut into the shape of a circle, which has a hole through it. Like this. So it fits onto the fairing of the rocket, and then I mounted the electronics onto it. To deploy the parachute, I flip the red switch on the remote, and it releases. Now that the rocket is finished, all we need to do is go out and test it, and hope that it works. So this time, I went to a slightly bigger field, where there is no risk of it flying into the trees. I also built this standard of XPS foam, to make sure the rocket launches as vertically as possible, and so I wouldn't have to hold the launcher. So here's the entire system set up on the stand, and as you can see, it stays upright. Then I folded and packed the parachute into the nose cone, and closed the hatch. After that, I powered on and armed the rocket by plugging in the battery into the RC receiver power rail. I also added this camera, but unfortunately, it's a crappy camera, so it corrupted my SD card, and I got no video from it. For this launch, I'll use around 1 liter of water, because this rocket's bigger and needs more water than the last one. Then I poured the water into the rocket through the top of the rocket, and screwed the nose cone back on. Like that. For this launch, I tried launching it at 8 bar, but it was leaking, and I was impatient, and launched it at only 5 bar, even if I knew it was gonna fail. Three, two, one. Oh shit. Fuck. And of course it did. Oh my god. Well, at least the parachute deployed. But the nose cone is in a hundred pieces. So yeah, rest in pieces I guess. It was leaking a bit right here, somewhere in the fairing section, so I could only launch it at 5 bars, which explains why it was unstable. So, the rest of the rocket was pretty much intact, except for the nose. I think I'll end this project here and head back home. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more content, and have a nice day.